Boys and girls, I am so happy to be here with you to talk about our next project. It is inspired by an American artist. Her name is Carla Gerard, and she is a folk artist from Maine. And I'm going to share a few of her uh, artworks with you. Um, so you'll see lots of patterns and lots of colors. So I'm going to show you one. So basically this is uh, what it would be called, um, you know, kind of a, like a tapestry or a patchwork. So she uses lots of different designs. And when we do our artwork, we're going to start with a line, line art and then fill in lots of different colors. Um, but her main paintings are usually uh, landscapes. And you can see that she creates this really fun uh, trees that look kind of like giant lollipops and she fills them with different patterns and that's what's really 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 fun so remember that since this is a video you can stop at any time when you're doing your artwork and go back and get ideas from her paintings so maybe the one that you do doesn't have as many trees maybe you have less houses Maybe it's daytime. This one is nighttime with lots of stars in the background. I'm going to show you another one in this one. So again, it's a landscape, but it's also a cityscape. So it's a scene of a city with lots of small houses. And if you notice the houses, they are really whimsical, which means that they really are kind of abstract. Abstract means that they are not, not realistic. Look at the, the shape of the roofs, look at the shapes of the doors and the windows. And that's what's really fun about making abstract art. You can really create different things. You don't have to be realistic. You can use different colors than in real life. Um, she also has this one, which is one of my favorites, which is a scene uh, with a little boat and there's a chicken and a cat going on. I guess a little ride in the middle of the night. But look at the shapes of the waves. Look at the background, the little hills in the background, the hills in the foreground. So when whenever you have a la landscape, you'll have foreground, which is what's closest to you. Middle ground, in this case, would be where the boat is. And background, all the way back there, those hills. So you have three different levels in your design and then so we'll start with a line drawing so for instance this is just a basic example of a line drawing so in in the foreground you'll see all the hills with different patterns then we'll have the trees and then in the background if you choose you're gonna have another hill so I'm gonna put this down I'm gonna get my piece of paper and my sharpie and let's get started All right, I am ready to start my folk art um, drawing. And I'm gonna start with a Sharpie. I have my drawing paper, and I'm going to start at the bottom of my paper, making some rolling heels. So remember, these are just really simple shapes, and we will fill in each one of these heels with a different pattern. So I'm going to make another one coming this way, like that. And maybe another one here. And then right here, I'm going to start adding a couple of houses. So maybe one that goes like this. And again, remember that these houses are really whimsical, which means that they're not really realistic and that's the fun about it so folk art artists uh, usually paint everyday life but just kind of you know having fun with it it doesn't have to be realistic and that's why I really like folk art it's just fun and I'm gonna come back and make details in a little bit I just want to add maybe a different house up here maybe a taller house so, or maybe a barn, like that, 
and like this. So just really, really simple lines. And then I'm going to add some really cool trees. So her trees, Carla Jaworet's trees, are just really, really fun. They almost look like large popsicles. So I'm making my trunk here and just a big, huge ball. And then I'm going to make another one. Now this one maybe will have kind of a different shape. So maybe kind of almost like a cypress tree or and do you see how this one it will be in behind so which means this one is closer to us and maybe one more right here so here's my tree trunk and then maybe again really interesting shapes and then i really would like to have room for fun sun again you're going to decide if um, this is during the daytime or the night time. It's almost like a really big sunflower in the sky. So now I'm going to add patterns in actually doors and windows. To my houses and again remember to keep them kind of large so we can color them in maybe just some uh, lines in here and perhaps a window that's a little bit different you can even make patterns on your roofs so I'm going to continue adding a lot of patterns so Remember, you do not have to be realistic. So think just different, different shapes. And experiment, how would it look if I put a shape like this? Maybe some lines. Maybe I can add just a fun little edge like this and maybe a different line here. So we're gonna go around and add lots of lines. And then inside my trees, I'm gonna have so much fun adding different types of patterns. So they could be, this one is going to have really large flowers. So here are my petals. And maybe here's a diff another flower. I'm going to continue adding patterns on my trees and then I'm going to come here and add patterns at the bottom uh, right here. So basically this will be, it will become kind of like a patchwork. So I will see you in just a little bit. Boys and girls, now that I am done with uh, my Sharpie line drawing, I am ready to add colors. So I'm going to think about um, where I'm going to add colors before I start, kind of make a plan. We're going to be using oil pastels for the details. So the details would be the smaller elements. So in, for instance, in here, my details would be my flowers and my small dots in here would be these kind of flowers um, in here would be the dots and maybe the wavy line so i am not going to color everything 
because on top of the oil pastel we will add watercolors so the watercolors will be covering over the oil pastel and it's a resist technique and uh, it will be used to uh, color in or paint in the larger areas for instance my sky um, the background of my trees the background of the houses maybe some parts in here so I have to remember that when I am coloring in with my crayons. The other thing to think about is uh, contrast. So if you make everything in, you know, like shades of blues, for instance, if, if I have lots of blues and greens in my trees and my sky is blue, it will not really pop. So I'm going to, you know, try to put a lot of oranges and yellows and purples and reds so basically warm colors against um, right here so again think about contrast whenever you are working with your colors so warm colors like the sun all our yellows oranges pinks and reds and cool colors like to see all our blues and greens and purples so it will give us contrast so I'm going to start with my crayons and again, right now I'm just coloring in my details. So for instance, I'm gonna go and do the flowers in my tree. And I will be using several colors, but not the background. So I'm going to continue coloring and I will stop before I paint so we can talk about colors one more time. have just finished um, my my landscape so I just added lots of details with my crayons and now I am ready to paint with watercolors so here are my watercolors and remember always have a small piece of paper under so you can test your colors and uh, have different size brushes if you have them otherwise a medium brush is what you really really need so I'm going to start um, actually with my background. So my background is going to be a really beautiful blue sky. And I'm going to just test the different shades of blues that I have. So I have this pretty blue here. And I have kind of a greener one. And this one. I think I'm going to go with this pretty blue. So I'm going to add water. So this is where, if you have a bigger brush, I'm going to add a little bit of water just around. Actually, when I go over, I can go over my sun. Um, and the reason I add water is that it will make the paint glide much faster. So I'm just going to go around. Oh, and look, I had... I did put a little bit of white for a cloud. Now remember to keep your your watercolors really um, light so that your crayons can show. So make them really transparent. Sometimes if you have add too much watercolors, then you, you don't see the crayons underneath. So remember, I'm gonna go over the trunk. This is really, really cool. So this is a technique that I love. It's called uh, resist. So the crayons resist the watercolor and you can go over. Now the reason I'm not going inside the trees is because I want to have my trees be different colors. So I'm going to do the background first, which is my largest area. Around. 
and I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna go over the sun and sometimes you do have a little bit of paint that kind of stays on it like this and you can choose to take it off with you know a little piece of I like a napkin or a Kleenex paper towel or you could just leave it like that it depends on it's just uh, a preference so I'm gonna go around here and if you have watercolor at home use watercolor um, paper but if you don't um, use just drawing paper which is what I'm using and here I had um, done some uh, a little bit of drawing with the crayons to make some a little bit of smoke coming out of my chimney so I'm almost done I think I want to add just a little bit of purple maybe in my sky just to make it just a little bit more interesting around here so again purple this purple is a cool color so I just want to add a little bit here kind of like that just a wash what we're doing now is called a wash so it's very very light very transparent transparent means that you can see through it so now I'm gonna clean my brush and I'm gonna let this dry a little bit so I'm going to work on the bottom part of my painting and I'm going to decide to look for contrasting colors so in here we have all blues and greens um, maybe I could do a pretty yellow and do you see how I go over and you could still see it and I really like this yellow so I think I might be adding yellow here too. Let's see what happens. It really goes well with the greens and the blues. And I'm gonna do this here. I'm gonna be careful not to touch the sky. So all of these are fields. So this one. Oh, I think this one would be pretty right here. See, does it give me enough contrast? Actually, this ended up being with a, this is actually a low contrast, but I think it still looks pretty. And let's see, here we have some really pretty, pretty. Oh, yeah, this, these are some pretty greens, turquoises. I'm gonna add some here. The fun part about being an artist is that you can make things that are in your imagination and you can use colors that you wouldn't see in real life. I don't think I would see rolling hills with stripes and dots and patterns in real life, but you can make them when you're an artist. So that's really, 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 really cool. I'm going to work on my houses here and I will see you in just a little bit. <laughs> 